Hello Nigeria, hello Africa, and hello world. Uh, my name is Austin Chidi, and welcome to the premiere video or live show of the Life Calling and Career Clinic. So basically what we do is talk about our lives, our careers, and how to better fulfill our callings, even in this world. Uh, with me in the live show today is Mr. Deli Ayimbo, one of the um, CEOs of the foremost Nigeria Trade Consulting Company. And also the founder of Life Calling and Career Clinic, Mr. Daniel, welcome very much. How are you, Chibi? Yeah, nice to see you. Yeah. Doing quite well. It's good to have you on the show today. So, sir, there have been so many philosophies, ideologies about life and what life should be, how we should be life. I mean, what's your take on that, sir? Um, I think what's important for us as human beings to understand the reason what life is all about. So, I like to use this illustration. That how do you know a plant is alive? How do you know uh, when you see a plant that is alive, it is living? One of the major uh, features of seeing that plant is that it produces fruits. The fact that it's fruitful is a sign that it's alive, it's living, it's productive. And that's the way I see life that life is supposed to be lived. To be alive is to be living, and to be living is to be fruitful. So, and it's very important because, you know, as human beings, if we don't define everything about our life and about what we do, what they have is that we just live subconsciously, live on instinct and allow the environment and society to dictate what we do. But when we understand the right definition of what life is all about, then it guides the way we live our life. So for me, I think the life that if someone is alive, then it will be fruitful. Uh, let, let me start it more on because when people say, okay, so where exactly are you to be fruitful? Yeah, exactly. We're about asking that, right? Yeah. So, to be fruitful, there are different ways you can look at it. Um, I would look at it like productivity. Okay. One of the words of fruitful is productivity. Productivity, generally, being fruitful as human beings to give up to have a child, but not, not just having a child, but reproducing yourself in that child. Mm. You must, and you must have something good in yourself to reproduce in that child. Definitely. Yeah, so we put it like that. But what I will fruitfulness is productivity. That means product and services. So I tell you that if everybody in the world lived the way you are living, are we going to have smart food? Mm, that, that's, that's a big question. Are we going to have chairs that you are sitting on? Are we going to have even you know, the camera that is, that is currently used to cover us? So if everybody lived the way you live, and that's the way to live really, because that's not thing that people have come and gone. A number of them have lived. Unfortunately, very few people live this way because people have not defined the essence of living. So they just come and live and just live like, it's almost like instinctively like animals. Mm. Unfortunately, I'm sorry to use that word, but that's the reality. So we must be living and to live the real sense of the world is to be productive, to be fruitful. To be, what product, what service are you rendering? What product? And what is your name attached to that you have added to the world as a value? It might even be as simple as a book. As long as it makes the world a better place, I think that's a better way to be. Well, so, I mean, basically, you just said that uh, as humans, as living beings, the one of the very primary as, uh, essence of living is that fruitfulness, that productivity, I and mean, then that impact that we get to live by the time we are living this world. Yes. Well, so, that, that's a very interesting perspective to look at life, really. I mean, so from what you said, it's, it seems like uh, our life should not fully be about us, right? Since, I mean, to be fruitful means we are relating with people, relating with things, and relating with nature and the like. So, I mean, do you think there are principles that really uh, should guide the way we live as well? Before I continue, you made a very important point that our life should not be about us, and that's very important. You're not created for yourself. Mm -hmm. I believe that to be human is to give. To be human is to love, and to be human is to serve. What that means is that if I'm loving, giving, and serving, I'm doing it for someone. So you understand? So life becomes more fruitful and meaningful when it's lived not for yourself but for others. Let me give you an example. There's a woman I met recently who is a lecturer in university who just didn't realize that. Look, is this a probably a professor? But just realize that. She's not really achieving much with her life, and she realized that look, she has this drawn heart yearning towards a, a prostitute. 
and decide to begin to reach out to the prostitute, talking to them in they have to change their ways, and also helping them to come out of transition. So I said, when we did it at 59 baby, she decided to go to a hotel. There were 50 prostitutes celebrate with them. And she was so impressed with how many of them she been able to influence within a short time. That is living. Now, she is not fulfilled lecturing as much as she is fulfilled helping those young ladies. And she said, there are young ladies as young as 17. And I said, why are you looking for him? And that one said, I need to pay for jam. Wow, imagine. Some of them, they are in school. They will come back during break to get money to pay for school fees. So it, she doesn't realize that. So when you, and that's very important for me because when you see prostitutes, generally you just accuse them and accuse them. Some of them, to the extent that we can't, we won't control what they are doing. But sometimes also, if you look at the situation, they probably are better than people that will carry gun and killing and, and extorting. At least people that are, call, they are, they are paying them, they are renting the service. I'm talking about the first They are renting the service, even though it's not something that is people society. But basically saying that they are doing it because they need to survive. Now, let's go back to the woman. The woman has found a reason for living. And that's the challenge in our world. Many people have not found a reason for living. People just live for themselves. And that's what people are so rich. Someone said, so people are so rich, all they have is money. So, so people are so poor, all they have is cash. Cash. Okay. 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 Finding money later on. Right. So people are so poor, all they have is cash. And what is basically saying is that these people, everything about them is only about them. Those are the people that when they leave this world, nobody will know the king, talk less of the father that is gone. You understand? So, coming back to your question, I believe that to now be able to live that life that I can say if someone is living. I believe there are principles that guide me. And in the course of my search, in the course of reading, in the course of studying people, I've been able to discover a number of principles that I will be sharing and discussing in this program that I believe will be of help to people, helping them to know exactly, helping them to know exactly um, what we we'll call the fundamental principle of succeeding in the country. And when I say succeed, I need to define it. It's not just about the human because success today is like cash, 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 cash. And this is you understand? So, but succeeding now is talking about the fact that you have lived a life that is fulfilling to yourself because of the value you are giving to your world. And of course, that eventually makes you significant. All right. All right, so like you said, we're looking at some principles. But before we do the, I would like to quote from an earlier statement okay. and try to bring it in the context of our society in Nigeria at large. Okay. Now you said living should basically be about others. Mm -hmm. But when you look like look at a society like Nigeria and basically basic needs like food, clothing and shop are yet to be met. I mean an average person is thinking of how do I get this done, how do I get this done? So how do you now come out from the from the mindset the environment has created in us and start thinking of others when basically I mean you don't know where the next thing is coming from. You know one of the principles we're going to look at in the course of what is called love, so you can read me. There's no boy that cannot give. Only that we have a different degree of giving, a different degree of service. And in time of rent, this, remember I talked about to love, to serve, and to give. So that means even if I don't have cash, I can see help. I can see support. I can see assist. I can see save without necessarily having cash. And I use the word cash deliberately because we find money later. I use cash deliberately. So now, if you live life in a way that your environment is what dictating what you do, it's still the same thing I'm talking about living instinctively, living suboptimally, living subconsciously, because the society is dictating what you are doing. If you say it's going to what you're doing, it's a very bad way to live. That you have not lived out of that society. So it, 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 to the extent that, and I'm not discounting those economic challenges, I'm only saying that in spite of the economic challenges, you can still serve. In spite of the economic challenges, you can still serve. In spite of the economic challenges, you can still love. In spite of the economic challenges, you can still give. Only that you're not able to give as much as others, but you can still give. You can give a smart. <laughs> you can give a smart. So, so because when you think of giving, you give me, if you only look at cash, you won't give everything. Yes. You, but some people just need someone to smell like them. Some people, you don't know father go. Great. You are working in a place, there's a gate man there, there's a, 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 a 
um, what's the name, uh, what do you call it now? Office assistant, the uh, people uh, doing that. Greed just made them feel human. Do you understand? So those are things we give as human that are not necessarily cash. But those are the things that make me to be human. All right. well, I really like that answer very much because uh, it just opens the period for the first law, the first okay. principle we talked about, which is um, the principle or the law of tangibility. Yeah. Well, basically, law of tangibility just says that everything physical or tangible is subject to change because they can be taken out by flood, fire, and force. So build your life on the intangible things of life. So I mean, the principle or the law of tangibility, can you shed more light on that? Now, like I said, these laws are things I, in my search for why we do what we do, how to live a more impactful and meaningful life, how to live beyond the environment, how to live a life that is more meaningful, and that's why I came across one of these laws that we are reading. Now, everything physical is subject to change. That basically tells me that look, in this life, if all you do for is what can be seen with our physical eyes, you might live, you might have a habit of very soon. If that's what you live for. I don't wonder why someone in suit will come out of his car to box and fight a damn food driver on Lagos Road. Since suit though. Because I remember as if his car, he will come out, remove his jacket to fight. His life depends on that car. Not to say that driver has done well, but you also have not done well fighting on the road in suit. Now, so basically saying that don't build your life on material things. The life of man is not about what he possesses physically. Even though our society is so flawed, our society is so uh, uh, vain, that those are the things we celebrate, does not mean that it's right. So, what the question that we should ask is so if we should not build our life on it, Tangible things of life. So what should we do? <laughs> First of all, the question I wanted to invite you back to me. What you need to be human, to love, to see, and to serve. And then, what does it mean to live? Which is talking about productivity. So, what are the things that will make you to be productive? Those are the things that are important. I realize that the most important things in life are not physical. They are not. They can't be seen physically. And you know, I have a medical background, and I realize that our eyes are so deceptive. You know where I can see you? Let me explain to you. Let me go into medicine and explain to you how I to see you. The light in this room falls on you, the rays, and the rays reflect as someone that came into my eyes. They touch my conductiva, enter into my uh, ichyos humor, uterus humor, and hit the retina. The retina has cells that can be stimulated by light rays. Those cells are stimulated and transmit impulse, electrical impulse, to the occipital lobe, which is a part of the brain. That occipital lobe already store information. I want to see someone in this figure, this human being. Mm -hmm. And because I've seen you before, it's not like, okay, this is chibi. And that means that any object that is not opaque, any object that the light cannot reflect from, I won't be able to see. So now, if all you live for is what is physical, but I'm a phone, you call me and call you with phone, and there's no wire connecting, but we're communicating through radio wave. What that telling you? There are powerful uh, uh, substances in our world that are so active and so important that we cannot see, mm. but yet are very, very potent. Like air, breathing air. You don't see the air, but you believe in the air because you breathe it in. So, what are the things that are very important that are not physical, but you should be the alive on? Love. The same thing we talked about before. Service. Mm -hmm. Knowledge. Wisdom. Understanding. Joy. Peace. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. These are the things that are very critical and important that we should build our life on. Now, what I realize is that those physical things that are subject to change, if you decided to build your life on these things that are intangible, you can acquire the intangible. If you acquire knowledge, become very skillful, 
you will be able to go through the, what I call the learning to wealth strategy. Learn, give you skill. Skill, give you competence. Competence, solve problem. Solve a problem, create value, and creating value at that world. Mm -hmm. So that means, I should not be focusing on the end result. If I want the end result, just focus on the initial part. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. With that, I can acquire that. So that means that even if I lose those physical things, as long as I'm building this intangible world, I will not acquire it. Everything you can see is subject to change. It can be taken out by fire, it can be taken out by four, it can be taken out by four, it can be taken out by anything. So build your life on the time of things like that. That's a very important point to note that building our lives on the intangible things. You know, uh, like you said from your um, learn to work trajectory. Mm -hmm. So basically knowledge from knowledge you can actually get to work. So people as uh, citizens, as people, as we live our lives subconsciously, uh, without going through this trajectory, we find ourselves really applying them. Yeah, yes, the, the beauty of laws is that I don't need to know about it. I don't know about it, I don't know about it. If I apply it, it works for me. Just like law of gravity. Even if I don't believe in gravity, if I jump from a cliff, I will break my leg. Even if I don't believe in it, and I know it exists, so, does it exist, so, it will break my leg. And that's the big principle. So, those who are applying principles, they might not know it's a principle. They might just see that, oh, this is what they told me to do, or this is what people are doing. Or, they don't get so that, that even though they are living subconsciously, not deliberately doing those And that's the challenge of not knowing the principle. If you don't know the principle, that means you can stop it any time and you don't you just know that uh, things are not working. Yeah. But you stop it, but you don't know what's causing it. But you have stopped the principle of what you understand. Because there's the principle you've always been applying, uh, uh, abiding by. But because you're not conscious, this is why you must be conscious of it. If you're not conscious of it, if you don't practice again, you won't know. It's the result that will let you know that something has changed you. But if, if you not take a lot of thinking to know that, look, there was something I did. That I've done wrong, rather than making this up. Uh, I'm always sorry. I'm always trying to bring it back to Nigeria. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, we, uh, even though all our audience is not in Nigeria, but it's, but it's still good to talk about the developing countries. Okay, yes. okay so for Nigeria, uh, I'll say most African countries, uh, we are uh, basically the world as a whole because what the world or what has been painted as a measure of success. It's basically basically tangible things. Yes. I mean, what we have um, celebrities and designers and you know, five seven star hotels and cars and I mean basically the standard that has been given as rating for wealth is tangible things. So with this knowledge that our, our life should be based on the internet, yeah. how do we really get to face it in such that I don't know, maybe strike a balance between the two of them? Start to balance now. The issue is that if I build my, my, myself, my, or my pursuit in life on the intangible, I will always attract the tangibility. I will, I will naturally attract that. Only that I will brandish the tangible as what you find me. Let me tell you the issue with some of the celebrity. They, they try to be relevant. They try to showcase a life that is not true. Because the people that are following them also believe the lies. So, and people are following them, if you don't show those things, they don't believe you are rich, and they want to show they are rich. Who are you impressed? Mm. You know, it's so funny. Who are you impressed? The reality is that you don't have this thing, but you are trying to show that you have it. Who are you trying to impress? Trying to show people that the fools, I'm sorry to use the word, but foolishness, like my mentor would say, is a state of existence. <laughs> It's a state of existence. It's a state of existence. So it's not like they are abused. But the fools will respect you for those tangible things. So that's the celebrity. And people now follow them. Have you seen them at the red carpet? They say, What are you wearing? I'm wearing this. When you don't have a sense of, um, um, I'm for the word to use now. Uh, I've lost the word. But the idea is, you don't. Self-esteem. You react. Where do other people give you self-esteem? Because you don't have self-esteem. <laughs> so you give you self-esteem that you're wearing, you're wearing, you're wearing, you give you self-esteem because the person himself does not have self-esteem. And that's what happens. So 
I mean, it's not just in India. That the same thing that is happening all over the world, all over the world. So many parts of the world that those are the things that make sense. Those are the things that make the difference, you know. But that's the world find itself. That's a very interesting exposition on the law of tangibility. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay. so uh, still on the law of um, tangibility, and yeah. like you say these are laws, and so that, uh, I mean, they are, they are not, they are not, they are not, they are not, I mean, they don't matter in spite of experiences, they are laws. So, whether I'm in USA or I'm in Arabia or I mean, you know, anyway. As long as I'm human on the earth, this just the way they apply on the earth. Is applied. Now, let me show you something. Let me try to explain, still talking about law of tangibility, that everything is going to kill me. And the fact that what you should pursue should be intangible. Look at this. When we look at money, although we'll discuss this in another episode of talking about law, but let's look at money. When you look at money, and a, a cash, a, a note is bond, that note got bond. Now, that note is a measure of value. That note is a measure of value. It's storing the value also. It's not the money. Yeah, really. I mean, we have data chain and data and the like. You get it, The real money is value, and value is intangible. The real money is value, and value is intangible. So that means. If I am to, able to create a lot of that intangible value, I will inevitably attract tangible cash. So that, that's the thing that. So when, when, when some people leave, leave their house in the morning, they say, I, I want to go and also. And, <laughs> and what they are saying is that they want to go and look for cash. Now, in the mind, he's talking about cash in his mind, even though he's saying money. But economists define money as a medium of exchange. So that means whatever I have, like I used to get what I want, is money. Do you understand? And that's when he said that with intangible value, I can get money. Do you understand? With intangible value. So what should be our pursuit as human beings? Pursuit of skill, competence, that will help us to deliver more value. Pursuit of heart, uh, um, um, the kind of mindset to serve, the kind of mindset that will help us to love and to give, that should be the pursuit. Look, check all the, anyone that you can see has been great in our world, that have lived and gone, go and check most of them. Is the value they create that distinguishes them? Fine, I'm not the line. Some of them make a lot of money. But most of them didn't set out to make money. They set out to create value, to solve a particular problem. And that problem is set out to solve, then define them. Such that now they are gone. You know the way we want to respect them? We want to respect them so much because of the value that they created when they were here. So our pursuit as human should be eternal. I don't know how, much, how else to explain yeah, 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 yeah. it. From what you said does shock me. I mean, okay. who thinks of the richest man in Southern Africa? Is that? Who thinks of the richest man in Southern Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. 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 Even though they are long gone, Time Magazine still regards Mother Teresa as a woman of the century. Even though they are long gone, Florence Nightingale. I've never really mentioned women to let us understand the fact that these are women that did a great stuff. Now, they did what they did are so peculiar in the sense that humanity that lived after them knew their name and it could still use some of the value they deliver. Yes. At least we are not killing things again in Africa and in Nigeria like we have been because of great stress. At least now, children who are growing early for early education, they will, you still see on some school, they will put Montessori school. <laughs> Montessori school. What? These are values, those people believe that. That's the way we should be. You know, it's unfortunate the way our society has become. People, the society has redefined the way we should be. And unfortunately, 
when we look, look at data on this called law of value, we allow that to drive us. Yes. Drive us. Such that people just don't think for themselves. They just allow what society is saying. So you just realize that society, everybody just crazy for cash to the extent that people will do money in the mm. So people even use their girlfriend. <laughs> That, do you know what that means? That's not human. That's inhuman. That's inhuman to kill another human being. It is not. It's not our nature as human beings. That's the pursuit of tangible things. That's what it does. When you are given the pursuit of those tangible things, it, it you don't see human beings again because you are so engrossed with them that you want to do anything to get it. And why do you want to get it? Just to show off. Just to show off, just to show, just to be able to pay bills, just to be able to feed. Now, look at us as human beings. You know, See, talking about tangibility. That's why we die. Because the fiscal is subject to change. <laughs> That's why we die. Now, but the most powerful part of us is the one that cannot be seen. But who, which one will take care of most? It's good to take care of our body. But what I'm talking about here, like I understand it of your but I'm talking about the way people you know, dress up, who is, you know, especially women and the like. I understand why they must do that, but some people do it at the expense of their internal. Someone says, in as much as it's good to take care of your container, don't forget your container. <laughs> <laughs> so you should be more interested in the development of your content much more than the container. But what has happened is that people we do everything. So those that are stealing, those that are doing money ritual, all the, everything is about the container to buy a car, to buy, to buy a house, to have physical, physical. But like I said, do anything you acquire that the physical can be destroyed. So if your life is built on it, I call that the height of weakness. Mm. Because when it's destroyed and your life is on it, you are going to be shut up. Why? Because your life is built on that which is destructive. Wow. A lot of tangibility. It's a, it's a really, 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 I mean, the, the basis, it's, I think it should be a really um, important basis for which we live our life, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean that if, as um, human beings, we can actually imbibe the principles like this in our life, although, uh, Trying to be very applicable to it, um, it might really seem. I don't know. I don't know about you actually. Okay. Because I think it might really seem sort of difficult because we have this kind of mindset as you no know, as kids growing up. seeing, I mean, our basic system is programmed in that direction. And that's why I said we do subconsciously now. So that so it's only few people that live consciously in society. That's why people will begin to live consciously. So I mean, that's also the reason why majority of people in the world, few people in the world are ruling the majority of people in the world. That's exactly what just said is the reason why. So everybody cannot be wise. Someone said some must be foolish for reason to happen. <laughs> so so everybody cannot be wise. But the reason why we need this program is basically to be able to put stuff out there for people to have a reason to think about what they are doing. So that do not just live so based on just what to eat and drink. That's the real thing that drives all that you do. You're not living for all that important values and things in life. I'm sure our time is fast then. So right. we'll continue in the next uh, episode and we'll be talking about the other uh, the All right, so if you are listening to this show today, uh, please and please and please, you have a choice now. So you either choose to live consciously, choose to live your life based on principles and not just Material things. I mean, the choice in your hand, the body you're caught, if you acquire the knowledge. Also, let them know I mean, uh, the program we also have on weekend. Anyway, it's be displayed on the screen, so we're able to see. It. So, after that, anybody that is seeing us and really want to, they can join us over the weekend. Alright, so like when Lakaya Play Codes, um, we'll be meeting more regularly this year. We'll be meeting during the weekends, most likely Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, more information will be available on the YouTube page as well as our Facebook page. You can check for us on Facebook at Life Alien and Career Clinic. And it's a, it's, a, it's a clinic of a young mind of people that are ready to change their world, people that are ready to live consciously and not just follow the bands of our body So I'll see you in the next show. Stay blessed.